Well, good morning. How are you guys doing? Do you love summer or what? How many people love summer? Man, four people love summer. All right, move to the north. Go get cold. I don't know. What do you want to do? How many of you love summer? All right, there we go. Some of you are waving your hands just to instruct you here at Freedom Church. We vocally uh, do things. We don't just raise our hands, so we're, we're good with that. But I love summer. Summer means time with the kids. I mean, I've been spending extra time. Um, Hayes and um, Isabel are home on Fridays when I'm off now, and they get Daddy Day, and they love Daddy Day, and the, the littles usually get Daddy Day. And now they're getting Daddy Day too, and so they love summer. Um, we are go going out to the lake and spending time on the jet ski. Anybody in my family knows once I get on the jet ski, I, it's just like basketball. Once I get the ball, Marcus, I'm not letting go of the ball, right? I'm a ball hog. Once I get on the jet ski, I am a jet ski hog. That is what I do. And so I ride everybody around the jet ski. Love summer. Love it. Love barbecues. Love. I, I even love the fact that this morning, I get here about 7.30 or sometimes a little bit before, I get here and, and it is like, well, I step outside and I, it's like I feel the wetness of humidity already all over me. I even love that just a little bit, just a little bit. I love that because I love summer. It, summer's just a great time. I think the reason we love summer is really, summer's kind of a symbol of the Sabbath day, just, just a little bit. It, it's sort of like the Sabbath. It, it doesn't mean we always do the Sabbath on summer, getting rest and relaxation. That's what summer is supposed to be about a little bit. But at least it's a symbol of what the Sabbath um, should look like in our lives. And Sabbath is about rest, but it's also about taking some time on your Sabbath to kind of look at your life and kind of recourse your life and just take some time to hear from God and make sure that you're on the right track. And so as we're ending the first half of the year, do you guys realize that we are entering this next week into the second half of 2015? Can you guys believe that? Like it's flown by, but we're entering up this first half of the year. I thought it would be a good time for just a summer recharge and recourse as a church. All right, so, so many of you have joined us in the past few months. In fact, just by a raise of hands, how many of you kind of would say, I really have started just attending, got connected at uh, Freedom Church in the last four months? Just raise your hand there if you say last four months or so. Look at that. You guys give them a hand. Wow. And so I thought over this time it would be just a great time just to have a, just a recourse Sort of a summer recharge. And what we said back in uh, 2014, you guys remember that? That was like forever ago, man. I was like, but remember back in 2014, we said that we were going to have the year of overflow. That was what we said. We said this was 2015 is going to be the year of overflow. And what we said was that in 2015... It was our hope that God would overflow us as a church. And we've said, this is back, for those of you who've never met in Whitesville Elementary, some of you have never, you never did that with us. And for, we were back in Whitesville Elementary, and we were saying, we're praying for a building that is just overflowing with people that, that are just on mission for God. And we were just, we were praying for, those of you who just raised your hand, we were praying for you. We were praying that you would be here. And can I tell you that last weekend, I mean, it's summer. Middle of the summer, we had 818 people in this building on the weekend. And you go, guys, you, you guys count everybody? We absolutely count everybody because you count. And so we count you because you count to us. You are not just a number. You are a story represented by what God has done in your life. And we were praying for you. And you're a part of the increase and the overflow that we've seen as a church. We, we were praying for a vibrant community that's serving the least of these. Uh, we, had a, we had a meeting this past week where we called in several other churches and said, we just want to share with you the vision we have for, for, sh uh, for serving some of the least of these. We want to share with you just the, the vision that we have uh, for orphans and single moms and, and caring for them and what it looks like to do that. And we called some churches in and just, I just had a moment just to say, we need to all get behind this. And I was able to tell them what was so cool is what our J127 uh, ministry here, which is led by Amanda Brown, does a great job job leading that. And you guys, if you don't know about that, if you're not involved in that in some way, um, we're all commanded in James 1.27 to be a part of helping orphans and, and the widows. And I would say even single moms fall into that 
And you need to get in touch and get part of that because you're missing some of the greatest stuff that's going on. And we're seeing through that and through our adopt a block and through our mission teams that are going out, just a, a great, vibrant community serving the least of these. And we're also seeing right here at Freedom Church a dream team that is growing by the dozens every single month. People are beginning to be fulfilled as they find where they're going to be a 10. And, and it's incredible. Uh, we also said we want to pray for full hearts from authentic relationships. Just, just people in small groups and in community together in authentic relationships. And I'm just hearing more and more stories about that. We pray for full souls um, just during worship. That we leave here and that the power and presence of God has been so thick in this place as we worship and we, as, as we experience him that something would change inside of us. And we're seeing that. We even prayed for this. We prayed for full bank accounts so that we could be generous people. So we prayed that if there were no jobs in families, that jobs would be found. That better jobs would be found where there were not good jobs. That businesses that have been dreamed about would be started. And just prayed for an overflow in the people of Freedom Church so that we could be generous. And so we will only meet these goals. We'll only kind of see this overflow continue to happen if we continue to ask the question, why are we here? And why did God put Freedom Church in Berkeley County? What, what are we here for? What are we about? And how are we going to see this? And so I thought it would be just a great week to just take some time and just talk about why we do what we do. And so I'm just asking for your permission this weekend, uh, just this will be somewhat sermon, but even less sermon and more just, hey, let me fill you in on why we're here. Why do we meet as a church? Why did we pray for you? Why are we praying for overflow as a church? And so I just want to kind of talk to you a little bit about Freedom Church, the vision of what we do, and get a recharge for some of you, a recourse for many of us. And for some of you, you'll be hearing this for the first time of why we do what we do. So, so first and foremost, I think it's important for you to know that we exist as a church to help people far from God but close to you, find freedom in Christ. That is what we're all about. We, we want to help people who are far from God. Some of you were far from God just a few months ago. And when we said that statement, we want to help people that are far from God, there was someone here that was close to you that said, I don't want to let them be far from God anymore. I love them too much. They love me too much. We care for one another. I want to be about helping them. And so we want to help people that are far from God but close to you. Find freedom in Christ. And is it, is it freedom in Christ? I mean, we talk about summers being so refreshing. You know what's refreshing? It's freedom in Christ. It's amazing to know that your identity rests in who he is, that you've been saved by who he is and what he's done. And it's just amazing to walk in that freedom every single day. And we want to help other people all throughout our county find that as well. And we are, in fact, let me, let me rephrase that. I am, and I hope that this church will be, and I'm seeing it more and more that you are, but we are ridiculously imbalanced and ridiculously committed to the pursuit of people far from God. In fact, we will do anything that three of you appreciated that. That's good. And I appreciate you for appreciating it, Cody. He's helping me out over here. I'm serious. We're, we are ridiculously imbalanced. There will be times... If you've grown up in the church, that I hope, it's actually my prayer, that you are uncomfortable with some of the things that we will do to try and reach people far from God. We actually say, anything short of sin, anything short of sin. We're not going to sin, but honestly, we won't do anything short of sin to reach people that are far from God but close to you. And so we're ridiculously imbalanced that because, because here's why, and I want to tell you, I'm an addict. I don't know if you guys have noticed or not. But I'm an addict, and I am addicted to change lives. Like, I, I can't get enough of it. Once you've heard someone share their story of a redeemed life with you, once, you've, once someone has sat down in tears and told you where their life was going but where it's going now, I mean, if you got to see the emails that I get, and you do get to see some of the Facebook responses if you're there, I mean, just the people saying, this is not where my life was, and God has stepped into my life, and it's changing now. There's something different. I am addicted to change lives. I've got to see more change lives. And, and, and here's why. I, I want to tell you a story. A couple weeks ago, um, some, of the, some of the leaders in our dream team came to me and they said, hey, there is, there, there's a, a woman named Heather who is connected with our dream team and she's asking about being baptized. And I said, great. 
Great, that's awesome. We're going to do a baptism on June 28th. And um, just let her know information. They said, well, here's the deal. She is going through some treatment for, um, for cancer right now. And her treatment is going to start again. And so we're wondering if you could do just a special baptism for her. Could you do a special baptism? I said, well, let's just see if we can work it out. Let's, let's figure it out. And here's the thing I love about our dream team. This was um, April Williamson, and she helps with our dream team out there. And she, she was like a little, like a bulldog. Like she was like, that's not a good enough answer. She just kept asking and kept asking, and she kept kind of going after it, making sure that we were going to make this happen. And so uh, she organized everything. She got everything lined up and helped us get, get this going. And then uh, everybody jumped in. We had people... Um, setting up to be able to go out to the lake to be able to do this. Uh, we had people saying, hey, well, we got to get some people there because it can't just be them by themselves for the baptism. We had a photographer come out and everything. And, and then here's, here's a picture. So I'm standing in the water with Heather, and, and we're getting ready to do this baptism. And, and same question I ask just about everybody every time they're baptized, unless I already know their story. I just say, hey, tell me, tell me why we're here. And I never know what I'm going to get when I ask that question, but I love to hear your stories. And, and it's all kind of various different stories. You, you know, your story is different than other people's stories. And so I'm, I'm in the water. I'm talking with Heather. And she says, well, just a few months ago, I mean, I was having a really hard time with what was going on in my life, um, with the fact that the, the, the cancer was there. Um, I was just, I was not in a good place with God. I couldn't figure out what was going on. And I hadn't really been involved in church a whole bunch, but my friend kept just inviting me and bothering me. Listen, did you hear that? People that are cl you're close to, they're far from God, but they're close to you. Somebody who was close to God and close to Heather invited her and said, hey, you, you should come. And she said, she said, honestly, I didn't really want to come. Like, I didn't really want to do it. And then she said, when I walked in, I realized that I needed to ask Jesus to save me during the course of the service. And she said, I sat there, and it was just amazing, the presence of God. And she's describing to me what so many people have described uh, so often. And, and then watch this. This is her baptism. If you can roll the, the video here. This is what happens next is I get the chance because someone said, she's close to me, but she's far from God. I got the chance to be able to pray with her family. You can see everybody's there supporting to go out this special baptism and to be able to baptize her in, in the lake and because she couldn't be here today to be baptized. But she said, I want to show this symbol of what God has done in my life. And I sat there. It was incredible. Incredible. And, and the thing that struck me so, so much was just Heather's realness. And she said, I'm at peace now with what's going to happen with the cancer. She said, no, don't get me wrong. It's, it's still hard. And it's still sad to think about what could be and what could happen. And I have kids. And she said, but I feel this unbelievable peace. The, the Bible calls that a peace that passes all understanding. We can't understand it. We go, I don't understand why I feel this peace. I don't get it. I don't have any idea why I understand this peace. I don't understand what's going on. Uh, it also is called freedom. It's called freedom. You're walking without chains on anymore of sin. You're, you're walking without chains of burden on. And, and stories like Heather, I'm addicted to. And that is what this church is about. We are committed first to the gospel. And that is that Jesus died on a cross and Jesus plus nothing equals everything. And when he died on the cross, he paid for Heather's sins. He paid to give her new life, and he did you too. And then I, I'm, I'm con just committed to finding everybody who's like Heather. And this is why we do what we do. And, and I would even ask you this. Some of you have been here for a long time. You're checking things out. You, you felt the power and presence of God. You, you've kind of had that in your life, but you've not been able to really figure it out. And I would just ask you. What's your excuse? Like, like, why haven't you taken the step across the line yet? What, what's your excuse for not getting baptized? Some of you have come up with excuses. You've been a believer, but you just haven't gotten baptized yet. You haven't felt like it. You, you just haven't been able to arrange things right. And then we've got Heather who couldn't be here today but said, I want this. I want this in my life. I want this to happen. And so I just have to ask you later, we're going to give an opportunity for some of you to follow through on baptism. We're prepared for you. We've got everything you need. If you didn't come prepared to be baptized, as some of you did, we've got preparations already made for you. There's no excuses whatsoever as to why you can't be. And I would just say, to, to, on behalf of Heather, 
to say, why won't you do it today? And, and I hope you will. So that's our, that's our first why we exist kind of statement, a recharge. And I want to recharge every single one of you. I, I want you to be imbalanced in your pursuit of those people who are close to you but far from God. I want you to think about it a lot. I want, you to, I want you to pray for them a lot. I want you to invite them and get them here to hear the gospel of Jesus. And so that's, that's, that's our first thing. Then we believe that there really should be a response once we learn that. You know, once we, once we see what God does in people's lives like Heather, what, what he does in our lives, how he's changed us, how he's saved us, who we were and yet how he changes everything that we are and saves us, there has to be some response to that. And, and so our first response is worship. Worship. We say there's three responses to what God does to us. And worship is the natural response of what God has done for us. And as I read the scriptures, I see that music is just a huge part of worship. I mean, you read it all throughout the scriptures. It talks about singing to God, lifting your hands to God, making a joyful noise. It talks about dancing unto God. It talks about, I mean, just a demonstrative worship. And the experience we have when we enter an environment where we can express our emotions to God is worship. So so we've done everything we can do here to create an experience where, where you can enter this environment that's set up for that experience. Everything we do, the lighting, the, the way we bring the lights down for you in, in here. You, you know why we do that? We do that so that you'll feel comfortable. Because how many of you, you kind of you know, you don't feel comfortable, like who's watching me? Well, we want to make it a little bit dark so you can feel comfortable. You, you know what? Is our music loud? Have you guys ever noticed that? A little bit loud? You know why our music is loud? Because some of you can't sing, right? You really can't. And so you, you say, the Lord says, make a joyful noise. And you're like, but I've heard myself. Dogs howl in my neighborhood when I sing in the shower. And so we play the music really loud so that you can sing to the top of your lungs and your neighbor won't even hear you. That, that's really, honestly, we want you to experience it. And so we have created an environment where there can be an experience. And then here's our prayer, and this is where it gets spiritual, is that God created these emotions inside of you, and we're hoping that this environment and this experience will tap into the emotions that God created for you and that you will be able to express those emotions to God. That is a worship. That's a worship experience. And so we're praying that for you. And every weekend, we have a dynamic, powerful worship experience that is planned and just designed to help you connect with God. And our goal is that we want to worship demonstratively. We say that all the time. We want to worship demonstratively. Look at this. Psalm 122.1 says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I love that because there's emotion. I was glad. Can I be honest? There are times when I have to go, all right, Sean, are you excited to be here? Are you excited about what God has done? Are you excited about what has happened in your lives and other lives? Yeah, okay, you are? Tell your face. Like, tell your face. Some of you need to do that. You're like, I mean, people are like, I don't think they want to be here. And you're inside, you're like, man, this is awesome. Tell your face. Sometimes it's like, man, I love, I love Jesus. He's awesome. He's great, great. He saved me. But you let 11 guys take a piece of leather and run up and down a 100-yard field on your behalf for your team, and come on, some of you guys will take your shirt off and paint letters on your chest because of that team. Some of you will get so excited, you'll be jumping up and down. Some of you travel all over the place to see. And when you get there, you lose your voice, you come home. Now, I know for some people, liquid courage helps that a lot. I know. I know that. But for a lot of you, it's not that. It's just a passion for what's going on in that football field. It is a passion for 11 boys that you've never met and that they'll be gone in two or three years. You won't even know. But new people put on the jersey. It is a passion. And then there's a guy who saved us, who, who, who crawled up on a tree to die for us, who, who, did, who did his, I mean, just amazing thing for you. And there's a power and a presence now that you feel. And yet a lot of us would go, well, I just don't know. I just have theological problems with all that raising of the hand stuff. I just don't know why, that, why we would do that. So somebody say, that's just not in my personality. Well, then change your personality. Right? I mean, God, 
I just wasn't wired up that way. I don't believe that. Because God said he knew you when you were still in your mother's womb and he, he wove everything together for you. And then he says, raise your hands, make a joyful noise, dance unto the Lord. So I think he wired you up that way. I think sin has beat you down. And so it's time to say, we're going to worship. I'm going way too long. we got way too much to do. i got to keep going. Y'all, y'all rowing me up. I'm skipping, I'm skipping some stuff here. All right. Hey, I want to tell you, I want y'all to know who kind of leads each of these areas in our church. I think it's good for you to know who our leadership is. And, and you guys see him a lot, but you may not know all that he does. Our creative pastor, Cody Burbage. Y'all give it up for Cody. We thought we have bad ideas and good ideas sometimes. I was like, hey, what if we put everybody on a baseball card? That'd be cool. Is that a good idea? I don't know. I thought it was cool. So it was cool. Look at Cody being, he's, he's like, mm. Cody, you guys think Cody gets up here and leads worship. He doesn't just get up here and lead worship. He prays all week. He leads the team that's here, the team that's back there helping all this experience go. And he's praying for you. He's trying to, to lead us in a demonstrative worship. He's writing songs. How many of you know we got, we have like 11, more than 11, we have 11 songs that we're going to do Wednesday night at our live recording. Come on. I just I want to I want us to take out all the chairs and have people sitting in the back for that to say thank you to this team for all that they do. But it's incredible, incredible what they do. But he leads us in that area. If you ever want to be a part of that team, he's the man to see. He can help you in that. Pray for him too. All right, next response. The next response that we should have and that we need to get recharged about. Like we need to get excited about gospel. We need to get excited about worship. I, mean, I want to see you guys growing in that, taking your next steps in that. But the next thing is community. Community. Now, now, here's the deal about community. You can be in community without being discipled. S some of you have been in community that wasn't about being discipled. It was about a lot of other things, but it wasn't about being discipled. But you cannot be discipled without being in community. There is no such thing as a, I am my own self, I, I'm just going to kind of learn from God. God Jesus is just going to disciple me through his word. No, you've got to be in community. In fact, 1 Corinthians 11, 1 says this, it says, be imitators of me, Paul said, as I am of Christ. And so part of being discipled, part of becoming more like Jesus, is being able to follow someone, imitate someone who is just a little bit ahead of you, have walked through some of the things that you've walked through in life, and able to kind of follow them. That is discipleship. And so rows are awesome. I love rows. I get excited about rows. I want to come and preach to rows. I love doing what I do. I love the worship. Worship can happen in rows. Um, preaching can happen in rows. But, but here's the deal. The, the next step for you and the, the, the real, just the kind of stuff where you begin to be made more like Jesus happens in circles. That's when it happens. It's not in rows, but in circles where you are able to share with, face-to-face, -face, talk with people who are in community with you. And we say it all the time around here. There's, it's someone that can look at you and say, you don't look good in what? Biker shorts. You got to have somebody in your life that's like, dude, that, that is not, that's not looking good on you. Like, that is not right. The attitude's not right. You need, to, you need to do something. You need to change something. You, you're, you've not been attending well at, uh, on the weekend. I've been noticing you've you got to have somebody who's in community with you. And, and here's my guarantee to you. If you're not in community, you will fade eventually. Like Rose, you, you'll stop showing up the road because something will happen. Something will happen that you need community in your life. And, and what, what will happen is, is no one will be there for you. No one will be there to pray for you. No one will be there to bring you meals. No one will be there to walk you through a dark time. And then you'll walk away from the rose because you never got committed into the circles. It's like Proverbs 13, 20 says, whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Show me who you're hanging with and I will show you a glimpse of what your future will look like. If you're hanging right now with everyone who does not have a connection with God, eventually they will pull you away if you don't have a community to kind of keep you balanced. It's just, it's just what it is. And one thing that Connie and I realized really early on in Freedom Church is that if we were going to keep Freedom Church small while we were growing large, which is what's happening, that we could not pastor everybody. 
that we could not be there for everyone. In fact, we don't have the responsibility to care for everyone. Like we, we realize that very quickly. We just can't. We can't care for everyone. But we do have the responsibility to make sure that everyone is cared for. And so the way we do that is through our small group system. And so I want you to learn more about small groups. I want you to get, get a part of them. Um, not many are meeting right now, quite frankly, because it is a summertime. It's recharge and, and, and everything's going on. But the last week of August, uh, we'll be kind of entering into our fall semester. And I want you to start planning now about how you're going to get involved in that. And I'll tell you about who leads this area for us. is our connections director. Y'all give Blaine West. Starting at first base. No. So uh, she's out there in the foyer every weekend. She, she's available, Blaine at freedomchurch.sc. She wants to get you connected through our growth track. She wants to get you connected in a small group environment. She wants to do that. So go talk to Blaine in the lobby. She'd love to answer any questions you get. And that's your next step. If you're not in a community group, I want you to recharge this summer. I want you to get ready for a great fall, and what you need to do is to get involved in a small group. All right, next is our response of generosity, generosity. Here's the thing. We want to be a generous people because generous people make a generous church. And one of our goals is to be the, the most generous church that we can be. I mean, just to say, we're going to be generous in everything that we do. And we unashamedly ask that if you call Freedom Church your home, if somebody asked you, hey, where do you, do you go to church? Yeah, man, I go to church. Where do, where do you go to church? If your answer would be Freedom Church, we unashamedly ask you to, to be a generous person because we think that's being more like Jesus. And we want you to give of your time, of your talent, and your treasure. And so time and talent means our dream team. And we love the dream team here. Hey, if you're on our dream team in any capacity whatsoever, raise your hand in the air like you just don't care. Can I raise them up? There we go. Everybody else, give them a huge hand. Just a huge hand. <laughs> if you're clapping your hand but you weren't raising your hand, you need to get on the dream team. You're missing out. I'm going to tell you, where you learn to be more like Jesus, where you learn what the church really is about is when you are serving someone else for nothing in return at all. And the dream team is an incredible way to do that. We want you to give of your time and your talent. Jump into the, the growth track, and you can figure out in our 2.0 what, what your talents are and where, how God wired you up with your personality and just everything that would kind of go into making sure that you um, can serve to your greatest fulfillment. We believe that every single person here is wired up to be a 10 in some area that we have of need in this church. In other words, for us to meet the vision that God has given us, to help people far from God but close to you become, uh, uh, have, find freedom in Christ, we have to have every single person in here serving in the area that God has wired you up to be a 10. And, and we want to help you figure that out in 2.0. And we want you to jump in and serve. Sometimes it's giving up your time. It's just your time. Uh, you've, you've, got, you've got a lot of stuff uh, that just, hey, we need somebody to do this. And then oftentimes you'll be able to give up your talent. I mean, we see talent all over this place. This weekend in our children's ministry, I'm so excited about this. We, we've kind of entering into a new phase of Freedom Kids. And one of the things that they're going to start doing is at, right, right at 9.15 when I started preaching about, they started what's called their programming time. And there's going to be worship in there. And there's people that have talent that are leading them in worship and they're learning songs. And there's going to be people who have talent in, in just drama and, and presenting the gospel in creative, fun ways for kids. And they're doing that back there. It's a talent thing. And, but this morning I went back there just to see something that they had done in the room. It's incredible. We added this little stage. And, and there's a friend of mine, Butch, who did an incredible amount around this whole building and helped lead through this whole deal. I went in and he took time this week to build a stage back there. It's just incredible. It looks like our stage here is kind of modeled after it. It's got lights up behind it and everything like this stage. And so your kids are going to be learning to worship. They're going to be learning. They, they break out into community groups there, into small groups rather. They're going to be learning about community and, and little small groups that they do. They, they learn about being generous. They learn about serving. They're learning all that back there. And it's because of the time and the talent of people like Butch. People like Linda, who's back there leading them in worship, who are on the dream team, saying, I want to be fulfilled, and I want to be a 10 in something. And if you're not a 10 somewhere yet, we want to help you be able to be that. A lot of you watched that movie back in the 80s, and you thought, I want to be a 10. How many of you remember 10? Y'all remember that? It's like seven of you remember that. That's how young our church is. Like, y'all don't even remember. I don't even remember her name. 
Oh, yeah. See, I knew somebody would. <laughs> there you go. I was just waiting to see who it was. His wife just elbowed him just now. Like, you remember Bo Derek? What's that about? All right. So I want to introduce you to who leads our dream team. Mr. Jason Williamson. J Jason, let me tell you something, man. Jason is incredibly driven and passionate about seeing you be fulfilled in your ministry. Here's why. I was talking to him, even last night I was talking to him, and he told me this. He said, man, I attended church for a long time, but until I figured out how I could be fulfilled and I could be just used by God with my talents and my abilities, I, it, was it was not the same. Now it's different. It's incredibly different. Can I tell you the cool thing about Jason? Jason puts in probably what is equivalent of almost a full-time job here. I mean, seriously, like, he's up here for staff meeting. He's leading teams. He's on the phone. He's doing everything. And he is a part of our dream team. Like, he's not on staff with us as far as the payment, but he is so committed to seeing you be fulfilled in your life that he puts in that amount of time. Is that not incredible? Is that not amazing what God is doing? And you have a story just like that. You have a story just like that. And, and I want to encourage you that we are a church that believes that free people serve people. When you found the freedom in the gospel, you will serve. Like, you can't help it. You're like, I got to serve somebody. I, I got to do something for somebody. It, it's a necessary response to help us to be like Jesus, to serve other people. Because it's when we go to the adopted block and see th those who are just uh, marginalized. And we, we, we go and we care for orphans. Or we serve those who are first-time guests walking in and give a great experience for them. Or we give of our talents and, and freedom kids. Or, or we serve in other capacities throughout this church. What we're doing is we're becoming more like Jesus. It's, it's just a necessary response. If we don't do it, the opposite of being generous is being greedy. And that's what God knew about us. He knew that, that, that we live in a very greedy and a very selfish world. It's all about gathering wealth. It's all about possessions, what we can get, not what we can give. I mean, look at Proverbs. It says in Proverbs 27, 20, that we're never satisfied are the eyes of man. That there's just this, there's just something within the sin nature that we have that we're just, we're never satisfied. Like we can't be satisfied without the Holy Spirit coming in and us becoming uh, generous. We just can't do it. And, and so here, here's another part of the system. God has put a system in place that we are to be generous, generous with our time. We are to be generous with our talent. And we are also to be generous with our treasures. Our treasure. It's the things that we say we got to get, get, get. God says if you'll start to give, 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 I will create in you a heart that beats like mine. In a generous heart, not a selfish heart. And a, a part of what this person does is I want to introduce you to our operations pastor. Would y'all guys give it up for Robbie Foreman? <laughs> Robbie has been with us. In fact, next weekend will be the four-year anniversary of Robbie uh, coming on staff with us here at uh, Freedom Church. He's been with us since the very beginning, just about. He was the first time we ever met in Whitesville Elementary. And, and Robbie is our operations Pastor, and what Robbie does is he makes sure there are systems that make sure that we're healthy. So he's making sure, are we a generous church? I mean, are we serving at the capacity that we need to serve? Are people getting connected the way that they need to get connected? He also oversees our missions. And we had a team that went to Jamaica just a few weeks ago. We've got a team that's going to Haiti in a few weeks. And you guys pray for me about Haiti not because I'm going, but because my wife is going, which means I'll be at home with all four kids by myself. And so I'm sacrificing for Haiti. That was supposed to be funny, but anyway, all right. <laughs> missions. He oversees our missions, our, our dream center, our adopted block, our trips. Um, we want to go on more mission trips. I, I believe that there are some of you who have places in your heart that we're supposed to go, and, and you need to lead that, and you need to, we need to go there. And so I can't wait to see what we do in missions. And, and so we give of our time and our talent and our treasure, because we want to be fight against the greed that is there. Hey, look at Isaiah 32, 8. I love this verse. Generous people plan to do what is generous, and they stand firm in their generosity. Generous people plan. They plan to be generous. Do you know if you don't plan to be generous with your time and your talent and your treasure that you probably won't be? In fact, I'll tell you, you can tell if you're generous by just take your calendar out and look at where you spend your time and where you currently spend your treasure. Where, where does it go? 
I'll tell you whether you're a generous person or who you're generous to, at least. And are you generous to the cause of Christ? And so you want to be generous. You want to plan to be generous. And then they stand firm in their generosity. You know what this looks like? When we say that we're going to be give, that we're going to be tithers, that we give that first. That we say that's the first thing we give. We don't wait to see what we got left at the end of the month. Because how many of you know there will always be more month than there is money if we do it on our greed. But we give first. We give first. When we sign up to serve somewhere, we show up. It's one thing to sign up. It's another thing to show up. See, signing up is planning. Showing up is standing firm. When we get the invite to something else that we could do or when an opportunity comes up that we don't feel like showing up to where we've signed up. And so we sign up and we show up. We plan to be generous. And then we stand firm. In Matthew 6, 21, Jesus points out how to discover any greed that is in our lives. He says this. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Wherever you put your treasure, that's where your heart will follow. I remember I had a friend of mine who was just a huge Gamecock fan. I mean, huge Gamecock fan. His son decided he wanted to be a Clemson Tiger and went to Clemson University. So he started writing a check. He, he didn't get any scholarships. He started writing a pretty big check to Clemson University every single month. Do you know what happened? He became a Clemson fan. You write enough checks to them, you're going to put on a Clemson hat because you're like, where my treasure is, my heart's going to go there. And you know what? When his son graduated, he became a Gamecock fan again. He saw the light. No, I'm just joking. All right, so he, he, he just, he put, no, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. You'll get me in trouble with the Clemson fans, and I love Clemson Tigers. I really do. I love them. And so, but where your treasure is, there your heart will be. I'm just going to be really honest right now. If you say you love the cause of Freedom Church, and you say that you're behind it, but you don't give up your time, and you don't give up your talent, and you don't give of your treasure, you're lying to yourself. Because what you love, you will put your treasure towards. Where your treasure is, then your heart will follow. Here's the reverse of that. It's kind of a neat verse. Even if it's almost by accident that you're still just putting your treasure in other things and other places and you just haven't gotten committed to it yet, where you put your treasure, your heart will follow. So it's amazing that sometimes your heart really wants to be in the house of God, but you're putting your treasure over here, and so eventually your heart will follow. If the boat payment is big enough, you're going to miss church every now and then to go out on the boat. I mean, I mean if you've already paid for the travel team, you're, you're probably going to miss church a whole bunch to go on the travel team. Where you put your treasure your heart will follow. And so we just need to recharge. We need to go, what are we really committed to? Are we committed to becoming more like Jesus? My, Malachi says that we can test God in this area of our life. I, I love the fact that God says, come on, test me. He says, bring the full tithe into the storehouse. Tithe means 10%. That there may be food in my house and thereby put me to test, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open up the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need. You know what that's called? Overflow. He says, put me to test. Give of your time and see if I don't supernaturally give you more time where you need it. Give of your talent. See if I don't just bring up more talent in you and bless you in that way. Give of your treasure and see if I don't take care of you. And I want to give you, there's some of you new, a lot of you raised your hands new and probably many of you haven't jumped into being generous. I want to give you a 90 day challenge. For 90 days, go sign up for the dream team and say, I'm committing 100% for 90 days. I'm, I'm in. Give your time, give your talent. For, for 90 days, start today by going to our offering boxes that are around that we make a part of our response time and say, I'm going to give. Starting today, I am giving for 90 days. And I'm going to test God and see what happens. And, and if in 90 days you come back and go, you know what, my life has not been better by being on the dream team, then I will say, we'll find you another team or, or maybe we're just not the church for you or whatever. I don't know. But we'll, give, we'll say, all right, you're released from that. You come back in 90 days and say, you know what, I've been giving. I don't believe in it. I don't think it's been, I just don't believe it's working in any way in my life. I'm not, generosity isn't for me. We'll, we'll offer you a 90-day money-back guarantee. I, I don't want your money if it wasn't given out of a generous heart. But it'll give you a 90-day challenge. I've been given that challenge for four years now. Never had anybody come back and say either one of those was true. 
what it does is you'll see that generosity brings an overflow into your life. Test him and see what happens. Summer recharge in the area of gospel. Get passionate about the people who are far from God. Summer recharge in the area of community. Plan now to be in a, commu- a small group in August. Get information on it. Find out where you're going to go. Get involved in worship. Right today, decide, you know what? Regardless of my personality, regardless of what makes me feel comfortable or not comfortable, I'm going to worship. I'm going to worship. I'm going to do it with just abandonment today. Just decide that. Decide today you're going to be generous. Because God, wasn't he so generous to us? So what are your next steps? Summer recharge. We're heading into the second half of the summer. Here's a couple of suggestions maybe. One is maybe today you need to ask Jesus to save you. I think there's a lot of you who have started coming and you're checking things out, but, but you need to ask Jesus to just need to say, help, help. I don't know you. On your card that's in front of you in your seat, there's a little connect card. You can just check there. I'm asking Jesus to save me today. There's going to be prayer teams right over here to my right. They would love to pray with you. At our resource center, we have a little book that we would love to give you as well. So you can do that. And so you want to do that. The second thing is, is maybe today you need to respond um, with baptism told you earlier, if Heather can make arrangements to be there and be baptized so that she could be a part of this day, I mean, honestly, what's your excuse? We're going to take pictures. You can send it to loved ones. We've got everything you need, short shirts, undergarments. we get your hair did again at the end, whatever you need. We're going to take care of you. We're going to watch your stuff for you. Someone's going to walk down here with you. I, I, I'm going to be in the baptismal pool with you, and can I tell you, over 250 baptisms now probably in my lifetime, I've never lost a single person, not one. All right, so I'm going to take care of you. If you're worried about that, we're going to take care of you. You come today, and you can do that. Join the dream team. Start to worship. Give today. These are the responses. You can go to the candles and light a candle to say, today's the day light came into my life. Today's the day I repent of the cross. Today's the day that I take communion for the first time as someone who is a believer who's passionate. I'm, and I'm going to take communion knowing that the blood and body of Christ is for those that are far from God but close to me as well. It's going to be an incredible day. We're going to enter now into our time of response. It's just a margin that we're giving to you. It's trying to, to give you some space. But I want to ask you, as soon as the worship team starts to, to, uh, to sing, if you're going to be baptized, would you just stand up right then and go right back to this exit door right over here? There's a team that's there. They're ready for you. They're going to help you get everything you need. If you've pre-planned to be baptized, in fact, you can go now. You can get them to go. If, 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 when the music starts, you go right back there. You'll be baptized, okay? We're here for you. We want to be a part of that. There's people going now. You guys give them a hand. Give them a hand. They're going to be baptized. It's incredible. Incredible. I am addicted to changed lives. I hope you are too. I hope you're recharged and we're ready to see what God's going to do. God, would you be with us as we respond? God, would you help us now in our time of worship to take our next step, wherever it is for us, whether it's singing the songs passionately, whether it's realizing the words and God, hearing the dangerous words that we sing, whether it's singing with a joyful noise for the first time, whether it's moving our not just our hearts, but our bodies to you demonstratively, God. pray that we would do that. We pray we would respond. I pray for those that are hesitant right now, God, to, to just be saved, to be baptized, God, that they would with boldness step up and go right now, God, in Jesus' name. God, I look forward to the honor of baptizing them. And I pray that we would respond to you as we take communion together, as we light candles and repent of sin, and that we would be there, God, and just feel your power and your presence. In Jesus' name, God, let us feel your presence. In Jesus' name, amen.